Well, I've been involved in epidemiology research projects, and I, I don't want it to seem like we're saying, oh, epid epidemiology is, is weak science. Just let that go in one ear and out the other. It serves a really important purpose, and all types of research do. But what's really important is that when we see the headline, you got to unfortunately reward them with the clicks, which yeah. it sucks. But you got to at least take a look and say, was this in a Petri dish? Was it in a mouse? Was it in a fruit fly? Was it in a huge, you know, collection of surveys? Was this a randomized controlled trial? You got to get an idea of what kind of research it was that they're reacting to. And then you have to acknowledge the shortcoming of every single type of research, RCTs included, right? So if it happened in a Petri dish or a, flu uh, a fruit fly or a mouse, immediately you have to say, well, let's wait and see. Yeah. You know, someone will follow up with more data. Yeah. And that's fine. It's okay to take a wait and see approach. Something is an epidemiology finding. You say, okay, well, that's interesting. Let's see if this gets, gets replicated uh, experimentally. Mm -hmm. Someone comes out with a randomized controlled trial and there's 12 participants per group. You say, well, that's an interesting finding, but am I necessarily certain that those 12 people represent the global population uh, or the population that is most relevant to me? Yeah. Probably not, right? So whatever layer of research you're looking at, there's going to be limitations, even the renowned meta-analysis, right? So I mentioned uh, an analysis, a meta-analysis earlier where I said, yeah, the analysis indicated 500 calories per day is a big enough deficit to blunt your lean mass gains, but don't take it too literally. And the reason I say that is a meta-analysis can only calculate based on the data that exist. Yeah. And the data that exist are dependent upon the conditions in which they're collected. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you might look, for example, at a body of literature and find bias that is built into the literature and cannot be untangled without more research, right? So if yeah. you're looking at high versus low protein intakes in a big meta regression, but you also notice most of the high protein studies are specifically in elderly folks, and a lot of the other studies are more likely to be in younger folks, now you've got age and protein level kind of intermingled and you can't parse those out without additional stuff. Oh yeah, I, you you actually see this all the time in uh, a, a type of meta-analysis that I understand why it exists, but I personally don't like it. Um, so there, there's a certain genre of meta-analysis where they essentially take just all of the studies that have reported on a particular outcome and then uh, and it's not necessarily studies where like one group does X, one group does Y, and then like compare between the two groups. Those those are, are my favorite type types of metas. But th this type that I'm talking about, basically you just get all of the studies that report on a particular outcome, and then you just look to see kind of between studies what study characteristics are predictive of better or, or, or of better results for the outcome of interest. Um, and so, like, in, in one of those that comes to mind, I think it was just looking at, like, what resistance training variables are associated with lean mass gains in female lifters. I think that's what it was. Um, but one of the things that they found was that uh, the length of the training intervention was negatively associated with lean mass gains. In other words, if you interpreted that literally, the longer someone trains, not the the less not basically like it, it's not saying the rate of gains slows down over time it's saying the absolute gains are smaller with longer training intervention so you know if you interpreted that literally like hey i train for three months and put on five kilos of muscle mass and then over the next three years i lose two kilos and and that's what i should expect so over time i only gain three kilos or or something like that um but much like you're getting at the 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 thing that was actually driving that finding was that most of the really long-term interventions were in elderly subjects because most of the studies in younger people, it's, it's college kids. And so you're pretty much limited by the length of a semester. And so those studies run 16 weeks if you're really on the ball and you can get everyone in the lab on day one. Typically, you're limited to about 12 weeks tops.